Class A, Class AB, Class B. It can all be kind of confusing. So we're going to talk about it today and see if we can't end some of the confusion, if you will. So this question comes from Tom in Louisville, Kentucky, which he asks, is it safe to say or assume that a 300 watt AB amplifier will spend more time in class A than a 100 watt amp? And I wish, I know what you're looking for is a simple answer because if, if a 300 watt amplifier uh, had 10% uh, class A, then, you know, 30 watts would be in class A. And if a similar amplifier at 100 watts had 10% uh, of it, it would only be 10 watts, right? So I think that's where that conclusion comes from. And I wish it were quite so simple. But while it is simple, it's not simple in that way. So let's, let's just talk for a moment about what it is we're referring to. And it is essentially amplifier bias, okay? If, if we had an amplifier that was fully class B, which really there aren't any out there, none that I, I am aware of, it would mean that uh, the zero point along here where, where there's no voltage, nothing coming out, and, and before we start putting in a sine wave that goes like this and crosses over that zero point, when nothing is coming out and bef as it starts, the amplifier is completely off. The power output stage is outputting zero. No watts are being expended. Then as the input signal comes and we try and start delivering power to our speaker, as it starts turning on, now we get current going through the amplifier and we start delivering watts to the speaker. All, and the higher we go, the more watts we deliver to the speaker. As it comes back down, the fewer watts. And then again, as we hit that zero point before the sine wave starts going under, the amplifier turns completely off. Now, class a would mean uh, something very different. Class A essentially means that the amplifier is always drawing current and the same amount of current. Where a Class B amplifier, when there's no signal, there's no current being drawn, except for the input stage, but we're going to, just for purposes of this discussion, uh, we're going to suggest that's not the case. And in a Class A amplifier, if it's a 100 watt Class A amplifier, uh, we are drawing 200 watts constantly out of the wall and it's when the signal starts going that that hundred watts is either going into the speaker or going into heat uh, to keep it on and, and the reason well but we don't need to go into all that so a class a b amplifier is somewhat of a compromise and it's what most people use certainly in our amplifiers the bhk series the amplifiers are class a b and what Bascom and amp designers like myself and others, Darren Meyer, Bob Stadther, the engineering people that work here that all design amplifiers, we put a certain amount of class A bias through the circuit, which means that for a small amount, for, for small signals, we're putting a certain amount of class A bias. And it really depends on the amplifier and the designer to what level uh, that's going to be. So if I had a 300 watt amplifier or a 100 watt amplifier, chances are likely I would probably have about the same amount of class A bias for my AB circuit. And let's call that the first, um, well, the first watt or two watts where it's true class A. For, for example, even though if you if you put your hand on a BHK amplifier, and th these are fairly big, powerful amplifiers, the BHK monos are 300 watts into 8 ohms and 600 watts into 4 ohms, they only officially have about a watt or so of pure class A output. Now, if you put your hand on it, you'll feel there's a lot of heat, far more than what 1 or 2 watts of class A bias would consume. So they're, 
and I don't want to get too involved in this because I'm only going to wind up confusing the audience and it's something I don't want to do because I want people to literally understand what's going on. So let's just suggest that there is a limited amount of class A-ness. Um, there are different degrees of bias that we can put onto an amplifier and as we build an amplifier we're going to set it now uh, and the amount of bias. So the BHK has a fairly high level of bias uh, such that it consumes oh, 70 watts or so but that that was a decision made by Bascom and it was made on our audio precision which is a, a measurement device that that we you have a number of them here at PS audio and it was also made uh, by ear so we always start when we design an amplifier with uh, the test equipment with the AP and we turn the bias up to where the distortion goes away to where we're happy with the measurements and then it goes into the listening room and from there we are going to come up with a combination of bias that gives us the sound that we want the sweetness and the extension um, up to a certain level of signal to where it sounds as sweet and musical as as we can and that is done in concert with the heat sink size the power supply the amount of money that we can invest into the design obviously if we have small heat sinks and not a great size power transformer like we might in a very small amplifier we're likely not going to have as much class a bias because we just can't afford the heat but technically speaking while it is true that most class uh, m uh, most class AB amplifiers of 100 watts probably have a little less bias than a 300 watt, it's not because of any reason other than the designer's choice. And so you can't just extrapolate that thought period, that, that thought out, if that makes sense. I, I know that might sound a little confusing. I hope it does answer your question, and I thank you for asking it. Bye-bye.